Welcome, uh, friends, to the uh, Medical Student Education uh, channel. I'm Salah Abbas. Um, today, I chose a small topic for you, and it's pretty straightforward, and we are going to talk about gallbladder polyps. So, in surgery, we often get patients referred to us for um, assessment and counseling regarding a finding of a gallbladder polyp, and that's usually detected on ultrasound scan, uh, which could be done for a variety of reasons. There is no need to um, to uh, panic. So I will give you a little bit of a background about uh, polyps of the uh, gallbladder. Um, they are a common finding on ultrasound scan, and it is very difficult to differentiate on ultrasound features between a benign and a malignant polyp. So the ultrasound is good for finding polyps, but it will not be able to tell us what type of polyp. If you look on to the right hand side uh, of the um, screen, you will find a, an ultrasound scan of the gallbladder and there is a, what looks like a mushroom coming out of the inner wall of the gallbladder, the lining mucosa of the gallbladder. Uh, and this is a polyp, uh, it's a true polyp, and when we get a polyp, we uh, need to uh, investigate that a little bit further and know what we are going to do about it. Now, it's good to know that polyps are very common, uh, and the majority are what we call pseudo polyps, which we will talk about in a minute, uh, so there is no need to panic. And also, we need to know that gallbladder cancer is rare, except in certain situations, which we will... Uh, demonstrate to you later on. Now, once you get a patient who is referred to you for a gallbladder polyp, then there are three questions that we need to answer, three things we need to think about. And these ones are which patient will actually require surgery, and that would be in the form of a cholecystectomy, obviously. There is no other uh, form of treatment. So, in which patient we will advise them to have cholecystectomy, which patient will require an ultrasound scan follow-up because we divide the patients into more or less these two categories, those for surveillance and those for surgery. And if we do the surveillance, how often we are going to do the ultrasound and how long for? So the period or the time period between uh, one ultrasound scan and another, and also how long are we going to follow the patients uh, up for as a period of uh, time to reassure the patient that this polyp is uh, benign and not uh, going to, uh, to require uh, surgery. Now, a step back a little bit and we uh, will uh, touch on the uh, types of polyps. We need to know that the majority, the overwhelming majority, more than 70% of polyps are actually pseudo polyps. And these are cholesterol polyps, just cholesterol deposits in the mucosa of the gallbladder that appear elevated on the ultrasound scan, and this is called a uh, polyp. The other form is adenomyosis, which is a totally benign condition. In the gallbladder, we see sometimes the uh, uh, mucosa or the uh, glandular uh, layers of the mucosa do uh, form nodules and infiltration of the uh, muscular wall. They are totally benign and it's called adenomyosis because the glands grow and grow inside the uh, muscles. So the majority of the polyps is one of these two who are totally benign and will not require any form of treatment. Now we know there are other polyps that are adenomatous polyps and we know that there are malignant polyps. Now in the gallbladder we find cancer of the gallbladder that arise from the uh, mucosa of uh, the uh, gallbladder with or without uh, a previous polyp. Um, because the disease is rare, we're not sure whether all the cancers will arise from adenomatous polyps or not, uh, and perhaps a lot of them do not, and in fact become as 
malignant like they do in the uh, stomach, which is different from the bowel cancer and the adenoma carcinoma sequence. It doesn't seem to apply here uh, very well. Also, we need to know that majority of the polyps during the period of follow-up, because we follow them um, quite often for small polyps that do not require surgery, and we will find that 93% of the polyps, in fact, will remain stable and will not increase in size, and hence it will no need no further uh, treatment. So, very basic things, but they are very important to uh, reassure the patients and uh, deliver the uh, uh, required uh, uh, treatment. Now, there are factors that we need to consider when we are dealing with a, uh, a gallbladder polyp, and these factors will determine whether we uh, advise the patient to have surgery or to have ongoing follow-up. And these factors will be the size of the polyp. This is of crucial importance. Uh, the bigger the uh, polyp, the more the worry, particularly if they are bigger than a centimeter, it means that they always have to be uh, removed. We have to know whether there are gallstones or not, because a polyp with gallstones, uh, and uh, particularly if they have symptoms, then the uh, treatment is definitely required in the form of a cholecystectomy. We have to also consider the risk factors for gallbladder cancer. Is the patient at risk of having gallbladder cancer? What are these uh, risk factors? Patient's age, patient, uh, and this applies to patients usually above the age of 80. Number two, the presence and absence of stones uh, and uh, uh, the presence and absence of symptoms. So obviously if they are older age, they have stones, or they are symptomatic, then we might be dealing with a gallbladder pathology uh, in addition to the polyp, which means that uh, they are likely to be offered uh, surgery. Now, the ultrasound will tell us whether the, the polyp is sessile or pedunculated. Sessile polyps and a focal thickening in the wall of the gallbladder, which is anything more than 4 mm, should be considered uh, seriously for follow-up because sessile polyps and uh, gallbladder wall thickening are uh, a risk for gallbladder cancer. It could be an early gallbladder cancer. It's not a factor. It does indicate that this might be a malignant uh, lesion right from the uh, beginning. A rare disease called sclerosing cholangitis or primary sclerosing cholangitis, and I put all these in S's so hopefully you can remember them, uh, easier. Um, Cyclorosal cholangitis is a disease of the uh, biliary tree that involves the intrahepatic and extrahepatic uh, biliary tree uh, and also the uh, gallbladder, usually in association with inflammatory bowel disease uh, such as ulcerative colitis and occasionally uh, Crohn's disease. Uh, and sclerosal, primary sclerosal cholangitis uh, rarely happens on its own, but it can be a disease on its own without inflammatory bowel problem. It's an autoimmune disease and these patients eventually will develop stones, they develop cholangia carcinoma and uh, they develop liver cirrhosis and they could eventually have hepatocellular carcinoma and die from the disease. So it's a pretty serious diagnosis. And gallbladder polyps in a patient who's got cyclorosis and cholangitis are, is a serious diagnosis. It's an indication to remove the gallbladder, regardless of any other factors, because of the high risk of gallbladder cancer in these patients. And also patients from South American Native Indians. So for unknown reasons, South American Native Indians have the highest uh, risk and incidence of gallbladder cancer in the uh, world compared with other uh, ethnicities. Uh, gallbladder cancer otherwise is rare in uh, Caucasian uh, populations. Now, so these are the factors that we will think of before we decide to advise the patient about surgery, having surgery or having ongoing uh, follow-up. We obviously need to do the routine things and we'll take a full history. You need to have liver function tests and uh, you may want to have tumor markers. And if you are thinking about gallbladder cancer, we do CA and CA199. Uh, and also, if, you, uh, if there is a polyp bigger than 10 
a, a millimeter or a sessile polyp uh, or uh, any risk factor for uh, cancer, then you might want to consider staging of the patient in case you deal with you are dealing with an established gallbladder cancer, and we will consider doing a CT scan of the chest, the abdomen, the pelvis in addition to a PET scan. That's a uh, thing that we do if we are suspecting gallbladder cancer. We don't do it for all polyps because the majority of the polyps that uh, get referred to us are less than 5 mm and they are cedar polyps and they don't need anything. Uh, these investigations are done in uh, patients where there is risk for uh, cancer. Now, what are we going to uh, do to these patients? We will consider the treatment based on the size of the polyp. So we will go uh, the indications and the type of treatment that we do uh, by size. Any polyp that's uh, one centimeter, 10 millimeter or more, this is a high risk for cancer and the patient will be advised to have a cholecystectomy regardless of any uh, other condition. Now if the polyp is less than 10 millimeter uh, and uh, uh, the patient uh, does have symptoms related to the gallbladder and we think it might be a, a biliary colic or they have uh, uh, stones uh, then they might even uh, in the absence of the stone they could have either uh, a calculus uh, cholecystitis or uh, biliary dyskinesia uh, and if the symptoms are suggestive of uh, uh, gallbladder disease even if the polyp less than 10 millimeter, then we advise the patient to have cholecystectomy. Cholecystectomy these days is a, a straightforward procedure, uh, very uh, benign, and most of uh, the patients with very low uh, morbidity. Then we look at the patient and we see if there are any risk factors for cancer. The risk factor that we mentioned in the uh, previous slide, any one of them that's present, uh, regardless of the size of the polyp, then we will proceed for a cholecystectomy. Now, if we have a, a benign polyp that is 6 to 9 millimeter, which is more than 5, less than 10, uh, in these patients, they will need to be observed. This is a group of patients that uh, do not necessarily uh, need surgery. And in this case, in the uh, uh, case of polyps between the 6 and 9 millimeter, we advise them to have an ultrasound scan of the gallbladder every six months and we should do that uh, up to five years to ensure stability of the uh, polyp provided it does the increase in size in the uh, enter. Polyps that are five millimeter or less than five millimeter then again we do uh, an ultrasound scan but this will be every 12 months and the duration will be five years. The purpose of this surveillance generally is to monitor for stability of the size of the polyp. And if during the uh, period of uh, uh, follow-up, regardless of uh, the time period or the uh, interval between the two scans, if it increases by 2 millimeters or more, then we advise the patient to have cholecystectomy. This is 2 millimeter over the 5 years period. Now, as I said in the previous slide, majority, which is the 93% of the uh, uh, polyps, they will not proceed. And a lot of them, in fact, disappear because they are cholesterol uh, polyps and uh, uh, mobility of the uh, motility of the uh, gallbladder sometimes can uh, wash them out so they get, they get sloughed and, uh, uh, and uh, settle down. And if it disappears during the follow up, at any time, then we stop following the patient up. So it's really a matter of size of the polyp, and the cutoff is one centimeter, a cholecystectomy. If it is less than 10 millimeter, then we consider the uh, symptoms related to the gallbladder uh, pathology, and if they are symptomatic, we remove the gallbladder. Also, if there is any risk for uh, gallbladder cancer, we remove the gallbladder, regardless of the uh, size. And then if there is none of these factors uh, in there, we divide them into two groups, the uh, 6 to 9 millimeter and the less than 5 millimeter ultrasound for five years, but the interval for the larger one 
six months, and the interval for the smaller polyps is uh, an annual. Uh, ultrasound scan and we remove if the if the polyp increases in size by uh, two millimeter during this period of time. Now that's all what I have to uh, tell you about um, the gallbladder polyps um, from practical point of view and how we uh, manage them. I hope this has been uh, this has been a useful uh, talk to you. And uh, uh, I'll be delighted to answer your questions if you leave anything in the comments and the uh, suggestions. Thank you very much for staying with me and watching the, uh, this uh, video. And I will see you in the uh, next video.